Hey everybody, you're listening to Life Below the Surface, presented by Carriage Kia. The podcast where we take you on a deeper dive into the lives of the animals at Georgia Aquarium and the people who care for them. Coming up on this episode... I think almost all the misconceptions about shark have been proven wrong. People's fear of sharks has been going on for for generations and, and you know and for millennia. Unfortunately, in the big picture, there's still a lot of really negative narratives out there. I'm Josh Blaylock. For the past 20 years, I've been in the zoological community. I was an animal care specialist for 15 of those years, caring for sea lions, dolphins, otters, walruses, birds, and a wide variety of different species. And now I'm very happy to be the senior manager of exhibits and projects here at Georgia Aquarium. In this podcast, I'm going to introduce you to some of my amazing co-workers and tell you some behind-the-scenes stories of how Georgia Aquarium works. This is Life Below the Surface, presented by Carriage Kia. Life Below the Surface is presented by Carriage Kia in Woodstock. Carriage is Georgia's leading Kia dealer and one of the top dealers in the entire nation. Service, community, and education are hallmarks of Carriage Kia in Woodstock. When it's time for you to lease or purchase your new vehicle, we hope you'll consider Carriage Kia in Woodstock. Check them out 24-7 at carriagekiawoodstock.com. So excited for today's episode. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics of all time, and we're being joined by someone with probably the coolest title in the entire aquarium. That would be the Associate Curator of Sharks, Kelly Link. Kelly, welcome to the podcast. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're very, very excited that you're here. We're going to be talking about sharks for a very long time, I can already tell, because if you remember, you and I actually met about six years ago. And do you remember what we actually did the first time that we met? You had a Shark Week party at your house. I absolutely had a Shark Week party (laughs) at my house. And you came over and we watched shark shows. And I felt like I was actually, I felt like I was a little bit more excited than you were to be watching Shark Week. You know I'm a huge Shark Week nerd, so. Probably so. I generally don't actually watch Shark Week, so. Fair enough. But for you, (laughs) every week is like Shark Week. Basically, yes. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about um, basically the a day in the life of, of what it's like to care for these misunderstood animals. So basically, let's just let's just dive right in. All right. Kind of the first question is, so when you're caring for these animals day in and day out, what does an average day of a shark caretaker look like? It's probably not as interesting as you might think. We get here in the morning, we take a look at the animals, make sure they look good, make sure that there's not any like bites or wounds or anything that we need to, to address. Uh, we do food prep. We feed them, we do a dive to maintain the exhibit, we feed them again later. So it's not as glamorous as a lot of people might think, but it's still really cool to be able to work with sharks every day. Absolutely. So you kind of touched on something there that I want to kind of get into a little bit more, and that's when you do your observations, when you do your your checks on the animals. What does shark health care actually kind of consist of? So a lot of the original checks we do, we're just visually taking a look at them and seeing if there's anything going on. If it's something that we think that is not very serious, that they're going to heal on their own, we just let them heal on their own. Sharks can heal from some pretty amazing things. We might give them some vitamin C to help them out a little bit, but otherwise we're kind of hands off with some of that stuff. If it's something that's a little bit more involved, we'll get the vets involved to decide what are our next best step is to be able to handle whatever the issue is right right and is it kind of is it kind of species specific what what kind of species do we actually care for in the sharks exhibit itself so in our sharks exhibit we have five species we have great hammerheads sand tigers tigers silver tips and a silky so most of our sharks we're going to kind of treat the same as far as how they're medical care is handled. Um, It does make it a bit more challenging if we do need to get hands on an animal based on the species. So like hammerheads have their eyeballs at the end of their heads. So they're a lot harder to handle than say a silver tip that is just sort of normal sharky shaped and not super large. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So uh, obviously here in our habitat our sharks are extremely extremely important you know for educating the public for in- inspiring people to kind of care about them but let's let's take a, a little trip here let's go out into the actual ocean itself why are sharks so important to the ecosystem 
sharks are so important because they're they're generally the apex predators of their area, which means that they're gonna be helping control populations of fish. They're gonna help maintain the, the balance of the ecosystem. So when sharks aren't there, it means that their prey populations explode, which means that the food that they're eating gets gets eaten down a lot faster. It help, like Disease is gonna spread a lot easier. Sharks help sort of manage all of that stuff. They're gonna eat diseased fish and take them out of the population. They're gonna keep things in check. So like they're sort of, they're sort of like the balancers of the whole ecosystem and when they're not there the ecosystem's out of whack. And what 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 out there would actually cause the animals to not be there anymore? Uh, this list sadly might be a little long I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> but feel free to what 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 is affecting sharks? Why are sharks worldwide on the on a decline? The short answer is humans. So humans are the number one driver of shark population decline for a lot of different reasons. You know, some of it is pollution and habitat degradation for, you know, reefs that are being destroyed or, uh, you know, climate change is changing how habitats are are made and how, what, what's left behind from that. But a big, huge driver for shark decline is fishing. Um, there's an estimated 100 million sharks that are taken every year, and 70 million of those are finned. So sharks are caught, their fins are cut off to be used in shark fin soup, and a lot of times their bodies are thrown back in, and essentially the animals drown because they're thrown back in alive, and they're just taken for their, their fins. Um, so there's, it's a huge, huge problem that doesn't really have a good pretty answer of how do you stop that other than if you can stop humans from causing so much destruction. Right. And from what I hear as well, too, the shark fin soup has no taste I've heard, whatsoever. I've heard that as well. I've heard it's very bland. Uh, I've never personally had it, uh, but it is, it's more of a status symbol for some cultures than it really is like a delicious meal that people are after. Right. So I guess one of the ways that, that we, you know, um, as as people on this planet, as people that want to obviously care for the ocean, um, I guess one of the, the best things that we can do is just get the word out about how important these animals really are. And when you when you talk about animals in general, uh, and this might be my opinion, but I think it's probably joined by several other people as well. When you when you talk about an animal that has so many misconceptions, when it has just so many false narratives about it out there, that that animal's probably got to be the shark. So in your experience, you know, what, what are some of the stereotypes that, that you think that, uh, that you have seen just completely be you know, destroyed? Those you know, misconceptions of them being the man eaters and these dangerous animals. From your experience, what has it been like to actually be with these perceived dangerous animals day in and day out? I think almost all the misconceptions about shark have been proven wrong because I mean, I work with them every day. You know, people think, oh, it's not safe to be in the water with them. They're going to attack people. Our sharks don't care in the slightest that we're in the water with them. They actually avoid the divers. They would rather not be anywhere near us. The vast majority of shark incidents that happen are mistaken identity. They were not tasty to them. Generally, people aren't fatty enough for sharks. They're looking for like a nice fat marine mammal or a nice you know, salmon or something. They're not looking for people. But they don't have hands, so the only way they can explore something is with their teeth. So it can be damaging if they do, but most of the time they're like, oh, that's not what I wanted, and I'm going to go away now. They might cause some damage in the process, but they're not trying to attack somebody. They're not trying to eat a person. They're just trying to see what we are. And we're in their space. You know, they're not, they're not like invading the oceans. They live in the oceans. So we're, we have to share their home with them. And there are millions and millions of people, probably billions of people that go in the water every day. And the number of people that are killed by sharks every year averages four to six people. So they're not mindless killers that are just out to eat people all the time. <laughs> Yeah, you would think a mindless killer would have, you know, a little bit more than four to six. I mean, four to yeah. six is all, it's, it's very, very tragic, obviously. But when, when you kind of compare the number of sharks that are killed every single year, 100 million and 73 of those are put through the barbaric process of finning. That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely something we got to change. Um, and I will give uh, Georgia Aquarium all the credit here. I think 
one of the, the, the best outcomes for the, the shark exhibit is that it gives people an opportunity to truly see how these animals really are. Like when they see you guys in the water with the sharks, there's obviously that, that little sense of dread and you hear the little kid, you know, mommy, mommy, is that it? But by the end, they're like, that's so cool. I want to, you know, can we get in the water too? Um, speaking with someone from guest services kind of prior to this discussion, I was like, what are some of the main questions that you get when you're at sharks? And of course, the number one is, are they dangerous? And then by the end of it, it's how can we get closer to them? You know, we have the cage dive experience. We have the incredible shark and stingray interaction program uh, that, that your team facilitates there. So have you seen in your time working with sharks, have you seen kind of a, almost like a, a transition, like a paradigm shift of, of how people think about these guys? Yes and no. Uh, the people who are able to come in and do our program, our, our Shark and Ray program, we have lots of people who come in initially they're trying to overcome their fear of sharks by coming in and interacting with one. And the, those people are, by the end of it, they're so excited to be there. They're so glad that they came in. And it does help sort of change their perception of things. Um, unfortunately, in the big picture, there's still a lot of really negative narratives out there. So there's still a lot of people that come in every day thinking that sharks are bad and sharks are dangerous. So we can only do so much here we have to change the narrative sort of globally of that sharks are not scary they're super important right yeah and i think it, it's a good thing to, that so many people come to visit because a good way to start is is those type of encounters that they have you know meeting meeting your sharks up close when they see it on social media or they see it on television they see their their favorite celebrity or something like that meeting a shark it kind of it, it, it does. It changes, it changes that perception. Now it's time for Fin Files, the part of the show where we dive deeper into the unique and unknown about the animals here at Georgia Aquarium. I'm joined by Carly Pope and Kelsey Ta, our resident fun fact experts. I'm ready to dive in. What do you guys have for me today? I've got an especially uh, Josh question and theme for you today. So Jaws, the cinematic masterpiece, was a perfect example of modern folklore, and it changed the public perception of sharks and the absolute trajectory of the future for sharks as well. Um, what other examples of sharks in popular culture do you think has had a similar effect? Well, the one, uh, the other unfortunate drawback of Jaws and its unbelievable success was that it spawned a series of probably some of the worst B movies ever created. Um, <laughs> but they're so bad now that they're almost entertaining. If Sharknado was on, I'm watching Sharknado. It's just all the way it's, back yeah, around to good. Exactly, exactly. It's it's you see how the, the the perception is just so off, especially someone like me who who knows sharks pretty well and understands them. When you see how misrepresented they are, it's almost like a caricature. You know, it, it, it's almost um, you know you, you know how how fake it is, and therefore it almost becomes fun. Yeah, there's some of these where sharks actually roar on camera, right? Yeah, in Jaws: <laughs> The Revenge, the shark actually <laughs> roars. Um, and it also was possessed by some kind of voodoo thing as well, which was cut out of the story, but they kept in the weird effect at the end and the roar. So there's another very little known fun fact about the Jaws franchise. Um, but in general, for the, the quote unquote damage that they say that the Jaws did, yes. there was actually a little bit of positive that came from it as well. Because people had been afraid of sharks. It, it, it didn't start in 1974. Right. Mm -hmm. People's fear of sharks has been going on for for generations and, and, you know, and for millennia. But what Jaws did is that it, it put it basically in everyone's household. You could live in Sheboygan, Wisconsin and go and be scared yeah. of the ocean by going to see that film. But also what it did is that it actually inspired a huge generation of marine sciences. Yeah, in wow. fact, uh, many universities around the country had to add marine biology after 1974 because of the demand that people got from being intrigued and inspired by by jaws so in fact the great white became the very first shark to ever be protected worldwide and that's probably thanks to jaws and as well as after 1974 and this is according to time magazine there was a 400 percent increase in published shark studies after jaws came out so 
basically, yes, it did some damage into, I guess, people's psyche. You can't go in the water now without that little soundtrack playing in your head. I get it. That's human nature. It's that visceral response. But what it actually did as well was it, it, it inspired a, a whole generation of folks, myself included, that actually looked at it and be like, that's, that's actually really cool. Sharks are extremely cool animals. So very good fun fact today, guys. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Stay tuned for the next Fin Files. I know you and I have talked about this several times uh, over the past couple years, kind of since it happened. You know, you've introduced a lot of people to sharks over the years, um, from your stint on Animal Planet to different, uh, you know, media outlets, things like that, news interviews, um, as well as uh, kind of uh, cable TV networks, things like that. What do you think is the uh, your most memorable shark introduction experience with with anybody, celebrity? regular person what just sticks out is one of your favorite shark encounters with someone else well probably the funniest one was when shaquille o'neal was here for shark week a few years ago just a fish please explain what happened <laughs> so uh he came in to do a uh, shark week filming and he is fearful of sharks so he got in and he's very tall so he was only in about knee deep because our water is not very deep and the zebra sharks came near him and he actually for context I'm 5'1 and he actually grabbed me and pulled me in front of him to protect him from the sharks that were swimming past I, I think I'm like a third of his size so it was kind of funny that he thought I was going to protect him in that moment but I mean, it, that's an amazing visual, uh, but it, at the same time, it kind of, it, it maybe in a way, too, was able to break a perception because of a seven foot one NBA Hall of Famer is placing a five foot one aquarist in front of him for protection from this dangerous shark, then maybe they're not so dangerous after all. Yeah, and by the end of it, he was very hesitant to touch the sharks and to interact with them, but by the end of it, he thought it was pretty cool, and he was he felt pretty good about being able to touch the sharks as they swam past. So even someone like that that was very fearful starting out, by the end of it, thought it was one of the coolest experiences. And that's that seems to be the trend. That seems to be the trend when you talk about sharks. It is, and it's, you know, ironically enough, it is the kind of the storyline of the, of the educational uh, uh, content in the gallery is that fear to fascination story arc. People are afraid of animals with sharp teeth that don't really show emotion or expression. I get it. I, I understand why people are afraid of sharks. And of course, their, their media perception uh, has, has not helped them. But I think when you can start with that fear that you know, things like Jaws in 1974 kind of produced, um, you, you can only go up from there. And I think that's really cool when you kind of see that light bulb go off uh, in people's minds when they're like, okay, this is actually kind of cool. And sharks are pretty cool. You know, that's, it's a kind of a cool thing to see. We have a lot of work to do still to, to protect these animals. But, uh, you know, I know there's going to be awesome folks like you out there doing exactly what you're doing, helping to break up those stereotypes, to care for these animals, to help inspire people to, to care for them. And that's definitely need a lot more of that. Let's take a break and get behind the seas, looking into some unique jobs here at Georgia Aquarium, which actually has over 30 different departments. And some of them actually, believe it or not, do not require a scuba diving certification. So today I'm being joined by Will Ramsey, who's our vice president of group sales. Will, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Josh. Thank you. Glad awesome. to be here. So Will, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do here at the aquarium? Sure. So I'm the vice president of sales here for the aquarium. So I oversee uh, a lot of the revenue generating programs that we have here. One is our catered events program that we have where we are today in our oceans ballroom. And it's a really exciting place to be able to host events here at the aquarium. And then I oversee all of our group sales operations. So any group that's coming to the aquarium that's over 25 people um, that comes with my team. Very cool. Very cool. So Take us back a little bit. How did you how did you get into sales number one? And then how did you end up here at the largest aquarium in the Western Hemisphere 
doing sales. Absolutely. Kicking and screaming, to be completely honest with you. I wanted to be part of this organization since the very first day I heard about it. Um, I uh, started my career while I was still in high school and started working at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay and just honestly fell in love with the attraction piece of what uh, this industry is. And I just decided that's where I wanted to stay. So I've worked my way up through different attractions and then ended in sales. Um, I never, ever thought I would want to be in sales. My father was in sales and it looked grueling at times and I never thought I wanted to do that but I found out that selling things like this amazing facility is really fun that's awesome so over the years and uh, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot here with, sure. this, with this question so over the years how many people do you think have visited the aquarium thanks to your efforts and the efforts of your team millions honestly you know we uh we do well over a hundred thousand people through our event program every year and well over that in in school groups alone every year and so we touch a lot of groups that come here and we hope that we make a difference and and um, provide just a little bit more enrichment and excitement uh, than uh, they would have had if they wouldn't have come to george aquarium that's very cool i mean if you think about it that's a lot of people learning that's a lot of people being inspired that's a lot of people seeing some of the most incredible animals at the one and only place that they can actually come to see all that so what what you and your team does is is extremely important we say we sell fun and that's what we want to do every day is be able to sell a fun experience for our guests to come and enjoy the aquarium and maybe learn a little bit at the same time so as we wrap up here speaking of enjoying the aquarium Let's say you, you, you get out of your office here every now and then. Where is someone going to find Will Ramsey if he's just walking around the aquarium? What's your favorite spot? You know, I love actually just standing at the front door and um, having people walk in and not know anything about what they should do and be able to kind of ask that. And they say, where do I start? And, you know, we just explain to them, you're going to see everything before you leave today and it doesn't really matter where you start. But I love being able to to watch that wow on people's face when they first walk in this building and be able to realize that they're getting ready to have an amazing time here at George Aquarium. That's awesome. Last question. Favorite animal. You know, it's so hard to say. It's like your favorite kid. You know, that's really hard to say. But boy, I love the whale sharks. I was here um, on the opening team and we got to see whale sharks come uh, to the George Aquarium. And it was just an amazing feat to be able to do that. And I've just fell in love with them and I've loved them for many, many years. So they're probably my favorite. Awesome. Will Ramsey, Vice President of Sales. Thank you so much, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. Before we go, there's one thing I wanted to ask you. You've worked in the Ocean Voyager habitat. Mm -hmm. You're now the associate curator of sharks. In all that time and all that experience, what's one of your favorite experiences, one of your favorite memories when it comes to sharks? It could be from the whale sharks to the hammerheads. What's just something that when you share an anecdote years down the road and all that kind of stuff of, of your time here and, and everything you've experienced, what's going to be kind of that one cool thing as of now? that you can always kind of tell folks? Uh, probably one of the coolest moments that I've had. I was lucky enough to go down to Mexico where the, the, may, the large whale shark aggregation happens every summer. We were down with the research team doing uh, photo tagging of those sharks. Whale sharks do have unique spot patterns, so we were taking pictures of their sides to identify the individual sharks that were there. and. Every day that we were out, we think we went out three or four days in a row, there were at least 150 sharks out there every day. We're in there snorkeling, taking pictures, and they look like they're going really slow, but when you're actually trying to keep up with them, they're going really fast. So I remember at one point I was swimming after this one shark. I'd gotten the picture of the fins, and I stopped to like take a breath and calm down a little because I was working really hard and I turned around and three more massive whale sharks were just like bearing down on me and one of them just literally ran over me <laughs> I had to like flare up to the surface and push myself off of its head because it just didn't care that I was there at all and to be able to like see that many whale sharks and such large whale sharks in such a small area and to know that like I literally meant nothing to them was just really cool because I was there and enjoying them and it didn't it didn't affect them at all they're like we're just going about our day we're eating we're doing our thing and I got to just sort of be part of that which was really cool that sounds very cool so obviously from everything that you've you've said and you've mentioned today you've had a 
a pretty cool career, pretty cool, pretty cool lifestyle, kind of living the, that, that shark kind of lifestyle. So if there's a, a, a younger listener, older listener, someone that, that wants to get involved more with sharks, what's kind of your, what's your best advice to an upcoming potential associate curator of sharks? What, what, would, you, what would you recommend? Well, just get as much experience as you can. Most of us have science degrees, but we have done internships. We've done study abroads, things like that. Any experience that you can get is good. And just get out there and do it if you can. Go find places that do sustainable ecotourism and go experience sharks. Go swim with them. Go feel what it feels like to be in the same space as a shark and do it in a, the right way. There's certainly some places out there you wouldn't want to go out with, but there's lots of really great ecotourism out there to learn about sharks and to really be able to appreciate them. So the more you can, the more experience you can get, the more you can get involved and get out there, the better off you're going to be. That's great. That's great. I mean, and, and honestly, coming to to places like Georgia Aquarium, we have our own resources here. You can learn all about the animals, but also if you visit uh, the website, uh, there's a lot of cool information just about all the different programs and educational things that we offer. Um, I guess one last question to kind of tag on to that. It, with, with all like the education groups that get to come in, all the, all the youngsters, do you see that the, the, the younger generation, the next generation that's basically going to inherit the oceans from us after we're gone, have you, have you seen like a, a kind of a shift in how the, like how the kids are perceiving sharks nowadays? Is there, is there hope for the future when it comes to shark conservation from this generation? I do think there's hope. I think in general across the board, not just with sharks, but with a lot of the environmental issues, I think a lot of kids do understand how important they are and how impactful those issues can be. And they, I think they do understand that we need to make changes. And I, I am hopeful that the next generation coming in will, will be motivated to make those changes and to, to help be the leaders that we need to see for our oceans and for our sharks and for our environment globally. Awesome. Well, I mean, honestly, Kelly, truth be told with folks like you that they can look up to and be inspired by to, to kind of follow that, that I'm, I'm jealous of what you get to do. It's so cool. Um, and I hope a lot of listeners out there can kind of look a little bit more into it and see that there are some cool careers in shark conservation and, and how important these animals truly are to our oceans and our ocean's health. So just want to say thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know that you and I are, we don't need a podcast to talk sharks. We, you definitely know that because I'm probably going to even bug you tomorrow the next time I see you to talk about sharks. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you had a good time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. On our next episode, we will be heading to cooler waters as we talk about the animals in our cold water quest gallery. Be sure to tune in. Life Below the Surface is presented by Carriage Kia in Woodstock. Carriage is the official car dealership of Georgia Aquarium and Georgia's leading Kia dealer. Service, community, and education are hallmarks of Carriage Kia in Woodstock. When it's time for you to lease or purchase your new vehicle, we hope you'll consider Carriage Kia in Woodstock. Check them out 24-7 at carriagekiawoodstock.com. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode. And for that, we thank you. We hope you enjoy this first episode of Life Below the Surface. If you did, please leave us a review and share this episode with your friends. Also, please tell us which topics you would like us to cover in future episodes. Send us a message in the comments or on any of Georgia Aquarium's social media channels. I'll see you in the next episode.